We are going to be kicking off today's show with some school committee news. On Thursday, November 5th, the school committee held a community question and answer session. At the start of the meeting, Dr. Keogh made a presentation regarding the interest in an override, which is part of the school department's request to add $3 million into the 2017 fiscal year budget. He went on to break out where the school spending is in his presentation. The biggest piece of the pie at 79.1% which is equal to $30 million goes to salaries. Those salaries are contractually negotiated and fixed. And as you can see on your screen here is the percentage breakdown of those costs. Dr. Keogh then went on to explain all of the auditing that takes place in the Easton Public Schools. Most recently was an energy audit, a student activities audit, a food services audit that was performed in the spring of last year. The business office just went through an audit over the past two weeks, and they're waiting back for that information, and a coordinated program review, which was done by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Also performed a security audit, and finally a phone service audit. Here's a clip of Dr. Keogh discussing an audit done by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, or the NEASC. Some people have asked whether or not an NEASC uh, visit is an audit. So the NEASC comes out and does a complete and thorough review of what you do in your high school. You have to go through it if you want to be an accredited high school. Now I know this having been a high school principal for 11 years and been through uh, at least three of them myself, but I also served on four um, visiting teams, but I was also a member of the commission of the NEASC. It is an intense and thorough process, and one of the big things they look at is whether or not the schools are properly funded, supplied, equipped. So sometimes I hear people say that's not really an audit. I completely disagree. Uh, special education, transportation was just recently audited, audited. We should be getting a report from them very soon. They've got some pretty good recommendations. And then an audit of our facilities was done in 2014, as most people know. So. Um, we are, I am trying to emphasize to people when I talk that being efficient and not wasteful is, it's like in my D. Easton's average annual per pupil expenditure is $11,476 versus the state average of $14,021. Here is Dr. Keogh outlining some of that information. Shot of the top 20. This is what you'd see. Their average class size is 16.7, 17.2, some higher ones, 17.1, 14.8. And then if you scroll all the way down, you see Easton. I added Easton, 19.9. And per pupil expenditures, 11,476. This is based on 2013 dollars. That's what they built this um, on. So if you go back up to the top, top 11,476, and you see things like 18,000 a year or 20,000 a year or 16,000 a year. There's a difference. So we can X out of that. But some people would argue that, well, you know, Easton is not one of those communities, and that's fine. So we sometimes we look at like communities. And by like communities, we mean the ones that have similar demographics. And that's really what this is here. And Easton is here. And so you have Westboro at 14.3 and 12.7 for Marblehead and 16 for Burlington. We still come in pretty low, even of like communities. By like communities, I mean similar demographic in terms of family incomes and uh, populations of students. So if you see at the bottom here, Easton is spending 11.476. Uh, the state average was 14,000. And that top ranked district of the rankings in the Boston Magazine was 18,000. Average class size, Easton averages 19.9 .9 students per class at the high school with 88 sections having over 25 students at the high school. The Easton Middle School has 79 sections with over 25 students in those classes. If you would like to see the school committee meeting, which includes the presentation from Dr. Keogh, questions from the community, and their regular scheduled meeting, please head over to eastoncat.org to watch it in its entirety. Also, we have one of the videos of a history teacher uh, from the Easton uh, Middle School and the high school. And so what we did was we're focusing on skills, but we also developed five specific Easton social studies themes that we're going to use to tie in 
throughout the, the curriculum, eventually from kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. And so those themes, there's five of them, interaction between humans and the environment, development and interaction of cultures, state building, expansion and conflict, creation, expansion and inter, sorry, yeah, interaction of economic systems, and finally development and transformation of social structures. And those themes come up throughout history, and they're not specific to any specific time period. However, while we're developing and actually writing the units, each unit will have a performance task that we will be assessing the students, and part of that performance task will tie into a, one specific theme. And then we'll take those themes, and we'll also be looking for mastery on certain common core skills that are specific to social studies. As all right, so another school news on Monday, November 16th, coming to the Easton Middle School on loan from Bridgewater State University is Project Earthview. Project Earthview is a joint endeavor of the Department of Geography and the Center for the Advancements of STEM Education at Bridgewater State University. The Earthview is both a fascinating teaching tool and a delicate work of art. The outside is a hand-painted large-scale map of the Earth's surface showing biological communities, rivers, seas, landforms, continents, islands, oceans, and major cities. The inside is a two-story portable classroom that reveals the positions of continents, islands, and landforms relative to tectonic plate boundaries and ocean spreading centers. So that's coming to the Easton Middle School next week on November 16th. All right, so do you have overdue books that need to go back to the library? Are you afraid that you're going to have to pay those fines? Well, the Ames Free Library is offering the residents a Food for Fines event that has started on November 7th and will continue on through November 14th. For every food donation you make, the library will waive $1 from your late, uh, late dues. All food collected will be for the Eastern Food Pantry. Also, the Easton Lions Club is looking for family-friendly talent for their upcoming talent show. You can submit auditions by November 16th by uploading a two-minute audition video to your YouTube Vimeo account and email your webpage URL and contact information to talent at eastonlions.org or you can mail the video to Talent Show, P.O. Box 1032, Easton Mass 02334. The Lions will then notify you by November 20th to see if you have made the show. Abby Hausman, Easton resident and 2015 Community Auditions finalist, will open the show, which is going to be held December 5th at the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall from 7 to 10 p.m. For more information, you can go to the Lions website, which is eastonlions.org. All right, so tomorrow, Wednesday, the 11th, is Veterans Day. There's going to be a parade down Main Street there in Northeastern. The parade will start at 11 o'clock. Parade participants will form at 1030 at the Washington Plaza. The parade route is as follows. It'll head down Washington Plaza to the World War I Memorial, where there'll be a short ceremony. After the ceremony, the parade will form on Main Street and continue to Veterans Memorial Park, where there'll be another ceremony and where it will end. The theme this year is Veterans of the Police Department. And just as a reminder, the Eastern Public Schools are closed tomorrow. So if you're looking for something to do after the parade, you can head over to the Easton YMCA. They're going to be honoring veterans with a flag salute led by a local veteran. That's going to take place at 1230. You can then donate to the veterans package and write a letter to a hero. This will run from 10 to 2, and a special guest will be showing up at 1 o'clock where you can meet a minion. Also happening tomorrow is another great event is at the Easton Children's Museum. They're going to be saluting the nation's military aviators by exploring the world of flight. This is free with general admission. Also on November 14th is the Children's Museum fundraiser, a night of comedy and laughs. This is for adults only at the Oaks Ames Hall. You can buy tickets by going to the Children's Museum at Easton.org, and you can find out more information on the event. Also on November 18th, which is another early release day from the Easton Public Schools, the Children's Museum is offering a babysitting training, babysitting training course for grades 6 and up. The cost is $50, and it runs from 1230 to 5. Okay, so the Easton Women of Today is hosting a general meeting open to the public on November 19th. That's going to be at 7.15 p.m. over at Stonehill College's Center for Nonprofit Management, which is on 16 Belmont Street. Guest speaker Stacy Verde, who is the co-president of HUGS, will be there. If you'd like to attend or need more information, you can always email the Easton Women of Today. Their email is located there. It's eastonwot at yahoo.com. Okay, 
So let's take a look ahead at the next few days on Thursday. The Governor Ames Estate, which is located on Oliver Street, is hosting a series about tree care and maintenance from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. The cost is $10 for members and $15 for non-members. Also on Friday, November 13th, the Holy Cross Parish Center, located at 225 Purchase Street, will be hosting a movie night. That movie that will be playing is Inside Out with Amy Poehler. There will be free popcorn, and for only $5, you can get two slices of pizza from Papa Gino's and a bottle of water. Feel free to dress in your pajamas and bring a sleeping bag and pillow so you can relax and enjoy the movie. All proceeds from the event will be donated to the Main Spring House Brown Bag Lunch Program. November 20th is the FEE Annual Volleyball Tournament. This year's proceeds will go to the Science for Scientists program to be held at the Easton Middle School. You can go to feeonline.org for more information. And finally, get your New Year's Eve's plans firmed up by joining the Ames Free Library with their Great Gatsby-themed gala from 8 p.m. till 12.30 a.m. The location of this event will be held over at the Quesit House. The event is 21 plus and the tickets are limited. All right, so let's save some dates here for uh, November and December. Oh, we've already done that. Okay. Um, finally, some ECAT news. We have a lot of events coming up over the next few months. We are looking for responsible residents to help us out with some covering of the Easton Holiday Parade and festivities the first weekend in December. There's going to be a number of concerts that are going to be taking place as well. If you'd like, you can contact Jason Daniels at the studio. The phone number is 508 230-7200, or you can email Jason. His email is listed here, jason.daniels at eastoncat.org to sign up. You do not need to have any prior experience to help us. All right, so that should do it for this week's Shoveltown Scoop. You can always join us here next week for what is happening in Easton. Thank you.